Hello, this is the Underwater Acoustic Modem Project. Our team consists of Nick Lesko, John Mortimer, Joey Del Ano, Travis Heller, and Taylor Michaels. We'll start off with some background info on the project, then detail the work we've completed this year, and we'll conclude with a video of our FPGA transceiver prototype. Underwater communication systems typically rely on large and expensive acoustic modems, hindering research and limiting the types of platforms on which they can be deployed. These modems utilize acoustic energy to wirelessly communicate with various nodes within a network since electromagnetic radiation of practical wavelengths suffers from heavy attenuation in marine environments. If the price point and physical footprint of acoustic modems can be reduced, they will be well received by researchers in the field and the size requirements of the platforms on which they can be deployed can be significantly reduced. Our team was challenged to develop a low-cost, low-profile underwater acoustic modem. This substantial goal is intended to be a multi-year project. Our deliverables for year one include a proof of concept demonstration of acoustic communication, as well as a system level design of the modem along with component recommendations for the future teams. The proof of concept demonstration was completed using New Radio, a free and open source application, using a speaker and microphone as our acoustic transmitter receiver. With binary FSK as a modulation scheme, we created a system that can send and receive data wirelessly over the air. With this setup, we were able to achieve transmission rates of up to 400 bits per second while maintaining a bit error rate under 0.2%. Note the actual modem will use a transducer and a hydrophone for underwater acoustic transmitting and receiving. Alright, moving on to the system level design. Starting with the analog, this block diagram provides all the needed analog components of the modem. The signal from the device output needs to be converted to an analog signal and then amplified large enough to drive the high capacitive load, the piezoelectric transducer. The impedance of the load then needs to be matched to maximize the power transfer. The receive side does the same process in the opposite order. In this system, the driving and receiving channels are controlled with a transmit and receive switch. With the low-cost design goal in mind, we spent a lot of time analyzing different options for the transducer, which is the most expensive component of the system. There are two main off-the-shelf transducers which meet the criteria for the project. The one on the left is from Teledyne, model number TC4013, which costs around $1,400, and the one on the right from Aquarian, model number AS1, which costs around $395. With these prices in mind, a potential option for lowering the cost of the modem would be to produce our own homemade transducer. The transducer shown here, designed by a Belgian research group, has a smaller footprint than the commercial options, as well as lower power consumption, and is estimated to be much cheaper to produce. Ultimately, the choice of which transducer to pursue is left to the future teams. Moving to the digital aspects of the system level design, the main goal here was to identify the key components of the digital transceiver and to create a block level diagram to guide the work of future teams. The diagram here shows the process by which data is transferred, formatted, packeted, serialized, and modulated into a signal that can be transmitted via the audio codex digital to analog converter. The received signal is processed in a very similar manner but in reverse. With two independent data processing streams, the digital transceiver is able to send and receive data simultaneously. A Cyclone 5 FPGA kit was selected for implementing the digital transceiver design. Binary FSK was chosen as the modulation scheme for consistency with the proof of concept demonstration. For the purposes of testing, 480Hz and 960Hz were the frequencies chosen. The image shown on the right contains a transmitted waveform of data pack containing 1010 in binary. And now for a demonstration showing the operation of the FPGA transceiver prototype. The value shown on the leftmost 7 segment display corresponds to the demodulated bit currently being received. The leftmost LEDs also indicate the value of this bit. When data is not being transmitted, background noise will result in a random and rapid change between the 0 and 1 state. Note that video quality may make it difficult to see these rapid changes. When a 480Hz tone is transmitted, the demodulated bit value rapidly changes to 0. This is indicated by the value of 0 shown on the 7 segment display while the leftmost LEDs are turned off. Similarly, when a 960Hz tone is transmitted, the demodulated bit is shown to be a 1. Data can also be transmitted by pressing the rightmost key on the FPGA board. In this case, the data being transmitted is a formatted packet containing the binary ASCII values for the string hello. This packet contains a total of 200 bits and is transmitted at a rate of 160 bits per second. Previous tests have shown that the FPGA transmitter properly modulates the acoustic signal during data transmission. Future teams will work to reconstruct data packets by using the demodulated signal shown here. With the groundwork we have completed, future teams will be able to finish the project and deliver a modem of great interest to a broad research community, including those in the fields of underwater communications and underwater robotics. Thank you for your time and we hope you enjoyed this presentation.